So now that we created this postcards, uh, I wanna if I click on this title or this image, I will be redirected to the post detail page. Okay, so for implementing this one, we need to go to the components folder and here in the article card component. At first, we need to wrap this image in a link tag. Okay, so uh, this imported automatically, and then we wrap this image in our link tag, and then the two property is equal to a template a string, and then the pass is equal to a slash block a slash dollar sign and then curly braces and post that slug okay if you remember in our app.js file here the pass for our article detail page is a slash plug and then a slash colon id this id can be anything okay and now instead of colon id i want to say colon slug okay i think it's more meaningful and then here i want to copy this link and i want to wrap the paragraph and this h2 in my link component okay so here i wrap both of them in the link component okay and now we're good to go and if i refresh my page and then as you can see uh, we don't get our postcards at first because uh, i didn't implement the loading state or the error state okay but later i i will implement the loading state okay so now if i click on this title or image we will be redirected to the post detail page okay and now I want to get this data dynamically in my post detail page and for this I need to go to the pages folder and here in the article detail folder I want to open the article detail page file and here at first I want to have access uh, to my slug so that to be able to fetch the post detail data okay so for getting the slug we need to use a hook called use prompts okay so here i use use a prompts and this will be imported from the react router dom okay as you can see here and then I wanna pull out the slug property, okay? And whatever uh, we we name uh, we name that here, we must use that name in our use prompts, okay? So here you see that I changed the name to a slug, and I I used the slug here. And if it was ID, we had to use ID instead of s slug okay but for now it's s slug and now if i log this s slug i see that i got this slug so let's open the console and here as you can see this is my s slug okay and it's the same as this one and yeah and in this way we can fetch our single post okay so here i need to use use query hook okay so here i use use a query and then for a query function i pass a function that returns a promise okay and let's create our function in our services folder okay so services folder in the posts.js file here i add another function called get single post okay so here it's get 
single post and then here we get the slug and I want to turn it into a template is strings and then at the end I need to pass my s slug and uh, yeah I think that's it and no I can import this get single post so I execute this function and I pass the s slug that I got from the use params okay and now then I need to pass a unsuccess property okay and here we get our data and then we can log our data okay so here this is not brackets this is curly braces and then I can log my data here okay so if I go here and refresh this page you see that I get the data okay uh, this console log is for the comments container component okay just ignore this and you must look at the log that comes from article detail page okay so here we get the body caption categories photo is like title and so on okay so at first i wanna make this breadcrumbs dynamic okay so here after on success if you remember uh, we had a breadcrumbs data for our breadcrumbs component and our breadcrumbs data is static here as you can see and i want to copy this and i want to remove this and here under the use prompts hook i want to create a state okay so use state a snippet and here i create a state called breed crumbs data and at first it's equal to an empty array okay so here we need to import the user state and then here instead of logging the data i want to say set breadcrumbs data and here i pass an array of these objects okay and then i want to turn it into a template is strings and instead of one i want to dynamically return the slug so i say data that slug and now we're good to go and if i refresh my page uh, you see that if i hover over this in the bottom left corner you can see that we're pointing to a slug okay and yeah that's it and now let's take care of this image okay so here for the image i say if the data question mark dot photo okay so if the photo exists i wanna return stables that upload fuller base url and then i wanna plus it by data question mark dot photo otherwise so here otherwise i wanna return images dot sample post image okay so again this images comes from constants okay as you can see here and here instead of plus sign i wrote a pipe symbol okay so this is equal to plus and now if i see my page you see that this sample image but you know what i think this image is ugly i want to choose another image for my sample image okay so i downloaded a image from the unsplash okay so you can go to the unsplash website and look for a image okay whatever you want 
I searched, I think I searched for pattern and I found this image. Okay, you can pick whatever you want, it doesn't matter. Okay, so here I wanna copy this image and then in my public folder, in the images folder, I wanna replace this image with this sample image okay so the name it's the same as you can see the name is sample.jpg and yeah that's it and i think this image is more artistic okay that the previous image was ugly okay so let's move on and here for for the alt i want to say data question mark dot title and for the categories here, I wanna render my categories dynamically. So here I say data question mark that categories, okay, categories, and then that map, and here we get each category, and then for each category, I wanna render this link tag. And here for each category, we have a category that name okay at this moment uh, if we look at our database here for the posts uh, here we have no categories okay you see zero elements but here uh, later uh, we will add some categories okay so each category as you can see in our backend in the models for the post categories each category has a name and we need to use this name okay so here i say category that name and for each category here the two property is equal to a slash block question mark and the category query is equal to the category name okay so here i turn it into a template a string and then here instead of selected category i wanna return the category that name and yeah that's it and at the end i wanna put all of these links in a div tag so here i create a div tag and i put all of these links in this div tag and the margin top class will be for this div tag okay and we also need to add a flex property and a gap for example gap 2 or 3 i don't know i think gap 2 is okay so that's it we can't see the categories at this moment because we don't have any category but we will add some later okay so now let's take care of this title and here for the title i just need to say data question mark dot title and yeah as you can see we got the sample title and then let's take care of this content okay and for the content we're using tip tap okay so we go to the tip tap website and here at first we need to install the tip tab for the react okay so just go to the installation section here and click on react and then here we need to install some dependencies okay so I just install these dependencies and after installation okay so just don't care about this warnings and yeah after installation we need to set a sample data for our content okay so in our database here we need to go to the tip tab website and here in the output section here I just wanna copy this sample data of the tip tap okay so 
I will provide this sample data for you in the description okay so I will provide the link of this sample data in the description for you and after copying this sample data we need to go to our database and here for the first post here I click on body field and then I right click and click on update dialog and here instead of uh, this object I'm gonna paste my object that I just copied and here so that to be sure that your JSON is valid just click on validate JSON and if it said that query and update JSON text are valid it seems fine and then you can click on update and now we have a sample data for our tip tap okay and then we need to render this sample data here as you can see we need to render this sample data in our front end okay and for this at first we need to create a state here and the state name is equal to body and the default value is null okay and then I want to render this body state instead of this p tag okay so we just we just say body and at this moment the body is null and here we need to somehow render or json and convert that in a html tag form in our front end okay so here in our tip tap website as you can see in the output section here for the rendering we have two options the option one is read only instance of tip tap and the option two is generate html from prose mirror json okay prose mirror is another library that is a rich text editor and the tip tap is based on this prose mirror library okay so here i click on generate html from prose mirror json or from json whatever it is and here it says that we have a generate html function that we can get from tip tap okay so here uh, we need to install the tip tap slash html at first okay so here in our front end project i say npm i and then i install tip tap slash html okay and after installation here we need to import the generate html so i just import the generate html here okay and then we need to use this generate html okay so here in the unsuccess function after set breadcrumbs data i want to use generate html and for the first argument we need to pass the json data okay so here our json data is data question mark dot body okay and then we need to pass our extensions that we used for generating or json okay so here the extensions that are used for generating this json data here the extensions are italic extension bold extension paragraph extension document extension and so on okay and you can get more information about extensions in the extensions section okay there are a lot of extensions that you can use them okay later we will add more extensions to our tip tap library okay and yeah there are a lot of extensions some of them are premium extensions and yeah that's it and now i wanna import the extensions that are necessary okay so here in the tip tap website as you can see 
here it gives us some extensions here for example document extension paragraph extension or text extension or the bold extension okay so i just copy these lines and as you can see here we need to pass this extensions okay so here in our array i need to pass my extensions so at first let's import the extensions okay and here we have also another extension called italic so i just import italic from at sign tip tap tip tap and then extensions and we must look for italic okay extension italic and yeah you just need to pass this extensions so bold document paragraph text and so on so here i pass the bold the italic the text the paragraph and the document extensions okay so uh, now if i lock this okay so instead of just executing this let me to lock this okay so here if i refresh my page and open the console i don't get anything so let's see what's the problem and here let's add a text and i say this is equal to html okay html is equal to this one and you now if i refresh this you see that our html is empty and i think we're on the second post and the second post post doesn't have any content okay the content has zero elements but the first post has some content so here if i open the first post body you see that in the content we have two elements okay so we must go to the first post here and now if i open the console you see that the html is equal to the html that we just got from our database okay so the generate html function converts the json to a html format for us but uh, this is just a simple text and this is not a real dumb object okay so here if i instead of logging the generate html if i say that i want to set the body to this generate html okay and then as you can see we're rendering the body here okay so if i save this and refresh the page you see that here uh, we get this text okay this is just a text but this is a html format text okay we have p tag we have a strong tag and so on okay so for converting this text into a, a real html objects we need to use a library called html react parser okay and here i just copy this and paste this in in my terminal and after installation we need to use this package okay so uh, the usage of this package is very simple as you can see we need just to import the parts from html react parser and then we use the parse function and pass or a string okay so that's it and here at first we need to import parse from html react parser and then here uh, before generate html before calling the generate html i wanna use parse so 
I just run this function and they return the data of the generate HTML function is a, a string. Okay, so I pass the generate HTML function to this parse function. And now if we save this and look at our front end here, if I refresh the page, okay, we didn't add the loading state. So we see that everything is empty. And then as you can see, we have this kind of beautiful paragraph that as you can see at first we have a normal paragraph and the second paragraph is bold and italic and so on okay and here's uh, here uh, there are some default classes that the tailwind applies to this paragraph okay and for making making this even better we need to go to the tailwind CSS website and at the bottom, you see here in the sidebar, there are some official plugins and one of them is typography plugin. Okay, so here we need to install this plugin here. So I just paste the comment here and now we're good to go and we can use this plugin. But before that, we need to add this plugin in the plugins array okay so in the tailwind.config.js file here in the plugins array i add this require from tailwind css typography and then for using this plugin we need to wrap or add a class of pros to our wrapper okay so here in our article detail page the wrapper for our content is this div okay and here i wanna remove this text dark soft class and instead of that i wanna add some classes okay so here the first class is prose class the second one is prose dash sm and then for the small devices or upper we have pros dash base okay so you can read more information in the document okay in the typography plugin document here as you can see you can explore these classes and customize them for yourself but yeah i think these three classes are good for now and now if we look at here and refresh the page you can see that at first there's an a space for each paragraph okay and then the styles are a little bit changed okay and yeah i think that's it for now and in the next session I want to implement the loading and error state for the post detail page or the home page. Okay. And yeah. And after that lesson, I want to implement the comment functionality. Okay. So uh, we can see the comments data here dynamically and we can render this tags, this share on buttons and the latest article and so on. Okay. So here at first in the home page, I want to take care of these two warnings. Okay. So the first warning here, I think, uh, yeah, it's related to the query key. And I think here, yeah, we didn't use the query key and the query key for this use query is equal to an array that at first has block text and then we pass or slug okay and yeah that's it and the next error here as you can see 
it's related to a property called a fill role okay so i just copy this text and here in the search tab i search for this word and here as you can see we have two fill role here uh, because we're using react we need it to be camel case okay so here you say fill role and here we have a clip role as well so i just remove the dash and r and add a capital r and then in the cta section we have another fill role okay so here again i remove this and add a capital r here it's the same and if i save this and refresh the home page you can see that we get no warnings okay so that's it and the next thing is that i want to save this requests in my postman okay so here i click on save and here this is for posts here again i click on save i think yeah i saved this one before this is for uh, deleting a post okay so i click on save and then i want to save it in main blog and then in the post folder okay so i just click on save and you see that it's saved here in the post folder and then for i think yeah it's for getting a, a single post data so i just click on save again i'm in post folder already so i just click on save and it's saved here and then we have create comment request so here i click on save and i go to the main black folder and here i want to create another folder called comment okay and i want to save this request in this folder and yeah the last one is for i think getting all the posts okay so i just save this too and i need to go to the main black folder and here go to the post and yeah I saved this too and now we're good to go and as I mentioned in the next lesson I wanna implement the loading and error state for the home page and post detail page okay so see you later <music>